Brother Marines, we return again on this day for how many threads are combined to weave the incredible tapestry of the Horus Heresy series. Let's find out. The upcoming The End and The Death, Volume 3, pits the Emperor of Mankind against Warmaster Horus in their final deadly duel. A single, incredible battle, born from a series of 60 or more books released over a span of 17 years. It has been quite a while, hasn't it? The massive Horus Heresy series has all been leading up to this critical moment, so before we find out how the War Master's Rebellion concludes, we're taking a look back at the series as a whole and the defining moments that shaped the apocalyptic Siege of Terra. Let's go through the clip show, shall we? We have Horus Rising, False Gods, and Galaxy in Flames. Yeah, do you remember when it kind of looked for a while like it was going to be a Death Guard book series? The novels began with Horus Rising by Dan Abnett, which introduced many important characters whose actions would reverberate throughout the series, including Garviel Loken, Ezekiel Abaddon, and Horus Lupercal himself. It begins hundreds of years into the Great Crusade, and along with false gods by Graham McNeil and Galaxy in Flames by Ben Counter reveals how an honorable and dis oh, decent decent it's clearly it's not the descent of Horus fell under the influence of the Chaos Gods while the series broadly follows the chronological timeline of the Horus Heresy continuing with Istvan III, in Flight of the Eisenstein by James Swallow, many events occur simultaneously, as can be expected in a galaxy engulfed by war. Fulgrim, also by Graham McNeil, covers a broad swathe of the activities of the Emperor's children, leading up to the infamous Dropsite Massacre including the climactic duel between the titular Primarch <laughs> and his brother Ferris Manus. That's featured right here by Graham McNeil. The Salamander's Iron Hands and Raven Guard, who suffered atrocious casualties, are revisited time and again from new perspectives. The Drop Site Massacre, for instance, is also mentioned in The First Heretic by Aaron Dembski Bowden, Deliverance Lost by Gav Thorpe, praise be upon him, and Vulcan Lives by Nick Kime. From the eyes of the word bearers, Raven Guard and Salamanders, respectively. Just as all of this is kicking off, Magnus the Red makes his ill fated attempt to contact the Emperor and, through traitorous meddling, has the Space Wolves unleashed upon his homeworld of Prospero. A Thousand Suns by Graham McNeil and Prospero Burns by Dan Abnett pair up to tell the story of the Fenrisian's brutal reprisal, and although these stories are only loosely connected to the battles of the Istvan system, their consequences all play into an apocalyptic conclusion as featured here. After a tumultuous start, many legions split off to accomplish their own goals, while those further from the epicenter are thrown into a civil war they have only just learned of. The word bearers are ambushing the ultramarines at Kalf, oh no, in No No Fear by Dan Abnett. The Dark Angels are deciding their loyalties in Fallen Angels by Mike Lee, and soon Angron pitches into the fray in Aaron Dembski Bowden's Betrayer. Fulgrim, meanwhile, enlists the help of Perturabo for a trip to the Eye of Terror in Angel Exterminatus by Graham McNeil. 
and Sanguinius goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cabanda in Fear to Tread by James Swallow. As more Primarchs learn of the heresy and tense lines are drawn between warring legions, many of these narrative threads come together in Unremembered Empire, comma, the by Dan Abnett. As Loyalist forces, including the Ultramarines, Blood Angels, Dark Angels, and Shattered Legions, congregate on Ultramar to plan their next move, as featured right there, see, Imperium Secundus. The chaotic nature of the Civil War lends itself well to both devoted reading and casual grazing. The sudden appearance of dangerous foes and unexpected challenges reflects the confusion and unpredictability that reigns throughout the heresy, even as Horus marches inexorably towards the Sol system, and loyalists prepare what desperate defenses they can. As the bulk of the traitor forces forge a critical path to Terra through the Beta Garmin system in Titan Death by Guy Haley and John French's Slaves to Darkness, the Imperial Fists battle with vanguard elements of the Alpha Legion in Praetorian of Dorne, also by John French. Soon, the Horus Heresy series finally makes way for the Siege of Terra's first salvos in French's The Solar War, as featured here and here. As the Siege of Terra series begins, everything focuses towards the single climactic conflict that will decide the fate of the Imperium. Characters from across the breadth of the series converge on Terra to make their mark on the siege, with no fewer than nine Primarchs taking part in one way or another, asterisk, indicating something at the end of the article. Traitor forces land on Terra in The Lost and the Damned by Guy Haley and smash steadily through Loyalist defenses over the course of the next three novels. The First Wall by Gav Thorpe, praise be upon him, Saturnine by Dan Abnett, and Mortis by John French. The action is interwoven with incredible clashes between legendary characters as Sigismund, Karn, Loken, Abaddon, and more roughhouse with hated foes whose rivalries span several prior novels, as featured here, here, and here. Nothing quite eclipses the drama of a Primarch on Primarch duel, though, and we get plenty of them as the siege continues. Rogel Dorn and Perturabo finally meet in open battle, while Jagatai Khan launches a desperate charge into the now ascended Mortarian's lines in Warhawk by Chris Wright. Perhaps most legendary of all is Sanguinius' defense of the Eternity Gate in Echoes of Eternity by Aaron Dembski Bowden, as featured right there, see, there he is with the Eternity Gate and everything pitting the Great Angel in back-to-back -back bouts with a reborn Cabanda and the demon Primarch Angron. The drama is palpable as Loyalist and Traitor efforts come down to a fight between two sons of the Emperor in front of the Imperial Palace, with only the end and the death to tie together the epic conclusion as featured after this. Volume 1 and 2 of The End and the Death, both by Dan Abnett, mind you, are already available. If you don't have one, why aren't you already out the door? And an essential read as Volume 3 rapidly nears its pre-order day this Saturday. Pre-order now or on Saturday, whichever you prefer. The duel between the Emperor and Horus is one of the most iconic moments of the history of Warhammer 40,000, and being prepared to read about it in the most exacting detail ever is a must. Asterix. Although not major players for most of the siege, Vulcan and Magnus the Red had their own private conflict in the novella Fury of Magnus 
by Graham McNeil. Hmm. Yeah.